if you could help me understand a certain Christian doctrine that doesn't make any sense. It is my understanding that the true God of the Bible is a just and righteous God. I cannot comprehend how a just and righteous God can condemn a person for doing something that we were unable to do otherwise. I do not believe that humans are born with Adam's guilt. How can it be our fault? If our choice to sin is due to the nature we were made with, how can God fault us and condemn us for disobeying him when we were unable to do otherwise? Does a person's choice to sin condemn them or does their nature condemn them? Yeah, I, I, again, I have to be honest. I don't think that the questioner is thinking well uh, uh, about what the question is focused on. You know, no one is finally condemned by God because they sin. They are guilty before God because they sin, but they can be forgiven. People are condemned, you know, in, a, in an ultimate sense by God, not because they sin, but because they didn't accept Christ. They, they weren't forgiven. So those are two separate but related things. Uh, you know, we are held accountable for our sin because we can refuse to sin. The problem is, is we won't ever be able to always refuse. We are not perfect. We do not have God's nature. We, you know, as good as we might be at any given point, it will never be unbroken. Okay, we will fail. Okay, we, we can't, you know, perfectly make the correct choice all of the time. And so we will become guilty. We are accountable because we we could have chosen what we did, but we chose to do it. And there are any number of factors as to, you know, why people do what they do and so on and so forth. I mean, just in human behavior, human experience. So, you know, I, I could I could turn it around and say, well, if the terrorist who busted into your house kills your 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 child, should they be accountable? Well, of course they should be accountable. The terrorist could have chosen not to do that. Well, to acknowledge they could have chosen not to do that doesn't get them off the hook for doing it. Okay, they are free to make the choice to commit a terrorist act. They are also free to make the choice to not make, not commit the terrorist act. You know, so, so these individual acts of sin you know, individual violations of what, of what God wants in terms of you know behavior or whatnot, we are accountable for them because we can choose to obey. But if God, of course, knows that we're not perfect, he knows we are going to fail, but we're not condemned because we're fallible. We're condemned ultimately because we never, you know, confessed that. We never turned to the source of forgiveness. We never embraced the forgiveness that God offers. So God knows what he's dealing with. Okay, He knows he, he's dealing with fallible humans. That's all he's ever going to have in the basket, so to speak. And so God takes it upon himself to solve the problem. So no, nobody goes to, you know, to a Christless eternity because they sin. They go there because their sin was never taken care of through the cross. Okay, they're, they're, you know, they don't they don't have salvation. They're not saved. Those are two related but different things and distinct things. And what I hear in the question is that distinction is being blurred and and a, in in some respects a bit inverted uh, when it comes to to articulating you know what what it, what the concern was in the question. 